this next type of drawing assignment that you're going to complete is called um, using a grid to draw accurately. So if you look at the example of this image, this drawing is called a contour drawing because it's just made up of basic outlines of the outside edge of the object and then details on the inside are really basic lines. So um, when you put a grid over the top of an image, it can help you simplify the image to look at one area at a time to draw from. So if you look at the grid, you can see that there's numbers across the top and letters down this side. That helps you know what part of the image you're drawing and then where to draw that in the empty space below because the grid printed below is the same size as the grid printed across the photo. So the first thing that you should do is make observations before you draw. I like to identify the easy boxes first. So which boxes have the fewest number of lines because sometimes it's easier to begin with fewer lines and then work towards the boxes with more lines that are going to be more complicated. Other students um, might decide that you just want to work in a progressive order where you might draw everything across the top row and then just move down in order. Um, but really you can draw any box you want because the idea is that all these boxes should fit together like a puzzle. So when you decide what box you want to draw first, um, I have some suggestions that you use some of the techniques that you've learned from faces and bases and then drawing negative space. So if I decide that I want to draw box C3 first because that looks like a pretty easy space to begin with, I'm going to look at the negative space from the front of the nose to the edge of the box. I'm going to pay attention to that distance. I'm going to pay attention to this distance from the bottom of the chin of the chameleon to the end of the box. And then I'm going to look at where these contour lines cross my grid. So if this was the halfway point of this grid line, I know that when I draw that eyeball, I need to be to the right of the halfway point, And that eyeball needs to be drawn right across the grid line. Um, if I look at where this contour line crosses the grid, it's almost in this corner. So I'm going to pay attention to that when I start to draw below. And then I'm going to look at this leaf right here. The end of the leaf almost touches the bottom of the grid. And if this was the halfway point of this grid line, it's basically in the halfway point. So when I make um, those observations, it helps me begin to know where to start over here. So down below, I might draw those same marks, kind of lightly draw the halfway point of each grid line. And then I might lightly sketch in a similar distance that this line was down in this space. And then same thing, kind of the distance from the bottom of the chin to the background. Um, and now I'm going to start to draw in the contour lines. I'm going to look at where this line crosses. This line is almost halfway between this mark and the edge of the paper. So here I'm going to come to about halfway and it curves slightly back out. And then this is the line that's the bottom of the chameleon. And that's going to basically go close to the intersection of the grid here. And now I'm going to go down to my leaf. That was starting nearly at the halfway mark, and it's a slight curve down. And I'm going to look at this negative space, that tiny little gap. I'm going to try to recreate the same triangle down below, and that's going to help me know where to make my leaf connect to. So when I have these lines in place, I'm going to stop and check for accuracy. I'm going to erase and make corrections as needed. And then I'm going to proceed to draw the details on the inside. So now I can start to sketch in the eyeball and the pupil is above the grid line. And then I've got a few of these texture lines over here. So that's all I would draw for C3. Um, as you draw, pay attention to the grading rubric. So you get 10 points for drawing the contour lines and the negative space accurately. You get 10 points for drawing the details of the object within the correct location according to the grid. So I'm talking about the inside details of this one, the chameleon, and the texture marks of the leaves. Then it says a student drew the pencil contour lines lightly so that they do not appear through the colored pencil. 
So you need to pay attention to that as you're drawing. Draw very, very lightly. Some of you really need to think about your hand pressure and not pressing so hard as you draw because you do not want that pencil line showing through once you add color because the last 10 points come from um, showing neat craftsmanship by coloring inside the lines solid, coloring in the same direction, um, showing creativity in the colors that you choose to create the um, image itself, whether it's the butterfly, the chameleon, the fish, and then how you come up with a really unique background behind it. So this final drawing down below will start out as a pencil contour drawing, and then you'll go back and add colored pencil to the top. So I know that I'm done with C3, so now I'm going to move on to another box, and I might move up to the top of the head because it's one continuous line. So now I'm going to draw B3. And I'm going to same thing, I'm going to make some um, observations of these negative space components. I'm going to look at where the lines cross the grid. And then I'm going to start to sketch in just the lines I see in B3. So sometimes it can be helpful to take scrap pieces of paper and cover up everything else you're not drawing so that your eye doesn't see those empty boxes around it because sometimes that helps you simplify um, what it is you're looking at. And then sometimes I use um, a viewfinder where it's just a note card that has a similar size space cut out and sometimes that helps me simplify to remove everything else around it so I'm only focusing on just the box I see down below. So I'm going to leave this one in place. Alright, so I know that I already drew the top of the eye, and I'm going to kind of pay attention to where the top of this horn is placed. If this is the very center of my box, I might make a mark that's the center. I'm doing it lightly so I can erase that. And I see this space between the center and the top of my horn. So I'm going to come in and kind of draw in that mark so that I've got a starting point to know where my horn should be placed, and that's going to connect into the top of the head. And now this part of his back is kind of a bumpy line that nearly goes to the center of this box. So I might start my line here and then kind of create these little bumps. It's a pretty continual diagonal line all the way to that intersection. Okay, now I see that I've got some details right here along the back of the head. And all those details need to be in B3. They don't extend down into C. And now I've got this beginning of the chameleon's arm. And then I've got a line. That's the other bottom piece to his arm. And now I'm going to draw in the leaf that I see up here. I'm going to look at that negative space, and I'm going to try to recreate a similar amount of negative space. The top of the leaf is basically in line with that dot in the center. And then it's got kind of a jaggedy side right there. So when I look at the leaf I drew, I realize that this line should be longer, so I'm going to adjust that. Okay, and I've got a few texture marks along the back of the chameleon. So now that I'm done with B3, I'm going to look at my picture and decide where I want to proceed. I might work up my row and just draw all the leaves I see in number 3, or I might continue to work across to connect the chameleon. So I think I'm going to work on um, getting C2 set up. So I'm going to use my viewfinder to cover up everything else so I'm not distracted by the other boxes. I know that I already started this leaf, so this line, well actually I'm going to make some marks. There's my center point, here's my center point, and I'm going to look at kind of these negative space areas. Okay, then this is going to curve down. I've got negative space right here. And that's going to curve up. 
This is the paw of the chameleon. And then I'm just going to continue to build each box uh, one at a time until this image is finished. Once I finish drawing the contour lines, then I'm going to be adding colored pencil over the top of what um, was already there. Uh, and you can always ask someone next to you if your lines are looking accurate. You can ask me if you need help getting some of these lines drawn accurately. Remember we are not tracing for this assignment. Um, and then when you feel like uh, you have finished, move on to color. A goal by the end of class today would be to have your maybe three of the total boxes finished depending on how complicated your image is. I would say three to four boxes would be a good starting point.